think almost everyone who lives in Australia has a story about magpies because for some of us they're like scary swoopy boys and for others they're harmonica playing soul singers of the morning. But why is it that we actually all have these stories? What is it about magpies that makes them so successful in the urban environment? If you were a magpie flying over this park, what would you see? What I see is almost a perfect landscape for me. Yeah. So what parks kind of represent and urban parks represent is almost perfect magpie habitat. Because you have large fields of grass, <laughs> large fields of grass, which are perfect for foraging, and then you have trees that align it, which are perfect for nesting and for looking out for predators, looking out for everything else. Yeah, we've like created this perfect magpie places, haven't we? In the city, this kind of prime real estate is hard to come by. And over 100 magpies now vie for space here. Territories are really specific. Say every two, 300 metres, you have a new territory start. And so territories are really strongly defined and really strongly defended. And they'll spend sometimes 10 to 15 years mm. in a patch. And that's their life. And so you can go and know your magpies, you can know every single one, you can see the same ones every single day. It's just, it's so unique. Magpies spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year defending their patch. And Farley and I are about to walk straight into the combat zone. So right now we are in between, exactly in between two territories. So we have the group we saw earlier to the right, yep. and this new group to the left. And so we are sitting directly in the battle zone, <laughs> right on the territorial line. And it kind of sits right now for us visually on this shadow. And pretty much anybody that wants to cross that line is entering another bird's territory. So these birds are defending it as much as they possibly can. And primarily they're just kind of shouting at each other, but they're also <laughs> fully attacking each other. So they're also looking for a single bit of weakness, which is, you, you turn around, I'm gonna get you. Yes. So they're always looking for an opening to attack. But there's another reason, aside from their vigilant nature, that magpies are so successful in our cities. And it has to do with their ability to quickly adapt to new things. City magpies have developed a heightened sense of curiosity. And when it comes to finding new food sources, fortune favours the brave. Farley can demonstrate this with a simple test where a magpie has to peck a yellow or blue cap to find food. And it's not long before one comes to investigate. Right, so what are you actually trying to test? Because uh, you, you're not trying to test whether they can tell what colours are, right? No, so we want to know, you know, can they do, make an association? And so we want to see if it can associate food with a colour and then can it repeat that and repeat that and repeat that. And so we're going for, can it do it 10 times in a row? Right. Yes. So, so that, that way we know that it's consistent and actually is learning it versus just happenstance. Look, look at the cock. Looking. Yes. <laughs> oh. And so there's a successful poke. Once a magpie has had a few successful nibbles under the yellow cap, Farley tests how quickly it responds to change by placing the food under the blue cap. There we go. And that's the more challenging test. Um, and that is a, can they reverse what they've already learned? And that would show you how quickly they can adapt to changes in their environment. Exactly. Right. So that responsiveness to their environment changing is something that's quite critical for an urban bird. Exactly. Oh, oh there see it is. That, that was a sharp jab. He really went for that. Yeah, because you imagine it's kind of the beautiful thing about this test is it's mimicking what they have in the environment, which is they're digging and looking for little mealworms, little grubs in the ground. And so it requires that intense poke. Farley's test demonstrates how magpies proactively try new things in search of food. The fact that these birds are so willing to land and go to this piece of wood and interact with it, put by a human, it does show that they have really, are really adapted to one us, uh, but also have this lack of fear of new objects. Yes. 
So in all of your research, did you find out whether magpies actually are pretty smart? Compared to other birds, yes, they are smart. They can do associative learning, they can do reversal learning, which in a way makes them an intelligent bird, yes. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard to say what is smart, what is not smart. Well, I feel like they're more intelligent than some people I know. I don't know. <laughs> well, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah.